Let's take a trip to Boston and visit the evidence and the mystery behind the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist. Okay, just landed here at Boston. Up next is a visit to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum to review some of the evidence and the mystery. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background here. On March 18th of 1990, two guys that were dressed as Boston police officers showed up outside of the security entrance to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum at 1.24 in the morning. They rang the doorbell and ultimately managed to talk themselves into the museum. Now once these two thieves got into the museum, they quickly bound up and uh, handcuffed the two security guards that were on duty that night. The two security guards were dragged down to the basement. They were each chained to uh, pipes uh, several feet apart from each other. And then over the next 81 minutes, those two thieves managed to steal 13 pieces of art, which included Rembrandt, Vermeer, Manet, as well as some other stuff. Now, back in 1990, the value of these 13 pieces of art totaled approximately $200 million. Today, 2022, the value of those 13 pieces of art are approximately between $500 million and $1 billion. What that means is that heist was the single biggest property theft in world history, and specifically the one Vermeer painting that was taken called The Concert, which today is valued at about $300 million, <clears throat> is the single most expensive or single most valuable item ever stolen in history. Now, when we arrive at the museum, what I'll do is I'll give you a quick tour of the outside to give you an idea where some of this stuff took place so we get an idea of what happened and where it happened. It is worth noting one final thing, that back in 2013, the FBI actually announced that they believe that they know who the two thieves were that ripped off the Isabella Gardner Museum. A couple of things, that they, they believe that they were involved with organized crime, and they also believe that both of those guys are dead. So... Having said that, I've looked at this case very closely and I have a lot of questions about how the uh, FBI arrived at this conclusion that they believe that they know that these two guys were involved with it. It is worth noting there's a $10 million reward as well as an immunity deal on the table for anybody who comes up with all of the art or a portion of the reward or if they come up with a portion of the art. 32 years later, 2022, no one has taken advantage of that $10 million deal. So having said all that, I'm of the opinion that the FBI is wrong about this and that organized crime was not involved with the heist of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum at all. Okay, we're outside of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum here. Now why this part is important is because you'll notice up there, you'll notice up there near the top right, there's an outdoor kind of roof patio, if you will. That's important because Rick Abbott, who was one of the security guards that was on duty that night, the one guy that a lot of people have looked at quite suspiciously, actually made his way to that portion of the roof for about one minute. Now this happened in the middle of the night, about 10 minutes after he first walked through the blue room. Now the blue room, is the one room on the first floor that the motion detector showed that the thieves did not enter. In fact, the one and only person to enter the blue room was Rick Abbott while he was doing his rounds. He was doing his rounds of the museum about 45 minutes or so before the thieves actually were let into the museum by Rick Abbott. So I'm theorizing here that what happened is Rick lifted the Manet painting from the Blue Room on the first floor, 
then shortly thereafter made his way to the roof up there and signaled the thieves that were parked on the street right here. Once they received that signal, a flashlight or something of that nature, I believe that the thieves pulled around to the other side of the museum, Palace Road, which is where they gained entrance. They parked their car there and they sat there for about 45 minutes or so before they were ultimately let into the museum. Now, interesting to note, when they were on the other side of the museum, Rick Abbott briefly opened the door. For some reason, the door on the other side of the road, and it was just a several minutes after that, that they actually rang the doorbell and he, they were let in by Rick Abbott. So that's a very suspicious uh, series of events and very suspicious activity on the part of Abbott. I've heard, never heard anybody talk about this roof and his visiting the roof shortly after visiting the Blue Room. But I think that that may, be, that may serve as a critical clue as to what happened that night. Okay, right now we're on Palace Road. Right here is the side entrance into the Isabella Stewart Garden Museum. Now this is the location that the two guys, the two thieves that were dressed as police officers, Boston police officers, actually showed up early in the morning, March 18th, 1990. They were buzzed in through this door and ultimately gained access into the museum and ripped off, at that time, what was $200 million worth of art. This is also the door that the thieves left and threw all the stuff in the car, apparently, and rolled. Now, it's interesting to note, as they were parked here on the road for close to 45 minutes, actually, before they decided to actually enter the museum or attempt to enter the museum, there were a couple of college students that were walking down the road and actually saw two guys sitting in a hatchback that were wearing Boston police officer uniforms. So the two thieves actually were seen before they were let into the museum. Uh, one other thing interesting to note, this door here, about 10 or so minutes before that they attempted to enter the museum by ringing the doorbell and talking their way into it, this door here was momentarily opened very briefly by Rick Abbott, one of the guards, which was not the norm, but Rick said they used to do that on a regular basis, which was clearly a breach of protocol to open the door for whatever reason. So I suspect that by opening the door briefly a few minutes before they actually gained entrance into the museum, that served as a sign to the two thieves that the other security guard that was on duty that night was actually doing his rounds in the museum. And it was Rick Abbott who was the person who was sitting at the security desk and was available to ultimately positive.